everybody. I'm Steven with the PH from PixelatedPoints.com and the Tangent Podcast. I'm here with Alejandro. Yeah. Boom. Got it. From, uh, what is it? Project Y Games. Project Y Games, yeah. With a game called Quest Quest. And uh, he's going to tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, so uh, Quest Quest is an open world JRPG where you play as the hero of destiny, given the sword of destiny with a great destiny to save the world. If this sounds familiar, you are on the right track. Uh, essentially, after that, we kick the player into the open world and let them sort of fend for themselves as to how they are going to save the world. Uh, we're trying to sort of revamp a lot of traditional RPG tropes. So, for instance, random encounters, instead of that being about, you know, bandits, you know, who just randomly attack you in the middle of the woods, it's about you stumbling on a bandit camp. And you can nope out of that situation and just sort of walk away and say, this is not my problem. Or you can go in and clear out that bandit camp, or you can, like, solid snake it and, like, throw on a box and, like, stealth through the camp and just rip down their flag. So you have a lot more choice in how you want to handle things in the world? Oh, definitely. And the choices only get greater as you start to explore the world and gain more abilities, gain new companions and new allies. And I remember when uh, you were talking to us earlier, you were saying um, the attacks are different, like so it's not just, or there's no block, yeah. and there's different types of attacks now in yeah. your particular game? Yes, so we first got rid of block because no one uses block, and I think it's like it's really boring. So we got rid of block, and instead what we're doing is we have three different types of basic attacks. So there's not just like attack and like, oh, you auto attack, you auto do damage. You have three different kinds of basic attacks. One for strength, one for dexterity, and one for wisdom. So you know, the, the, the gunny guys who are, you know, running around the machine guns, they're going to be good at dodging bullets, so you don't right. want to use a dexterity attack against them. However, they will not be as good at dodging fireballs, so you use magic attack. It's kind of a rock, paper, scissors sort of system. Adds a little bit more nuance to the game, I find. Absolutely. And I remember asking, is there an experience system? So there is not. We, we, we totally nixed uh, the experience system. There is uh, no, like, experience grind. You're not going to, like, run around in a farm for 10 minutes, like, killing cows just to level up. Uh, instead, you gain uh, more powerful abilities, and you, know, you level up your health and your uh, mana by going through the world, collecting items of powers, clearing dungeons, clearing random encounters, things like that. Excellent. And so what inspired you to make this game? Was it uh, just all your experience with our JRPGs and wanting to make one that fit you more with the things you liked about it? Yeah, so it's a combination of things. Um, so I love JRPGs, but I also love shooters and strategy games. So I tried to take a lot of the philosophy of those games and try to apply it to the JRPG, see what could be done differently. Also, you know, uh, we live in an era where there's all these really cool open world um, RPGs that are out there, and there's some mechanics that, like, you would look at the trails and be like, oh, that's what they're doing there, and they wouldn't do it. And then I was just like, well, wait, what if, what if I just did that instead? Right. For the art style, were, like, say, 16-bit RPGs your favorite, your bread and butter of RPGs growing up, or did you just choose this because it'd be e the easier art style to go with making a game this big or something like that? I mean, it's definitely a mix of the two. So, like, Pokemon is definitely one of those games that I just, I love the art style, I love the simplicity of it. Um, we didn't go for, like, straight 16-bit because I wanted the color to pop more. So, you know, we're not working with a limited color palette, but we are working with that limited pixel count, um, which I think adds, you know, it's still colorful, but it's simplistic. And the art style itself is sort of like, you know, a little chibi and adorable to give it kind of like a, a, a bit of a lighter feel. And do you have any plans with like online stuff or DLC, stuff like that? Uh, so, not currently. Our hope is, fingers crossed, when we release the game, it would be really cool if we could continue to update the game for free, just add little bits of content, keep pulling the story through, because I think an RPG is so much more impactful when you can't just blow through it in an afternoon and then never come back to it again. I like the idea that you know you will be making choices in two months that you wouldn't have made two months ago because you are you are a different person who's been transformed by your real life and now that's affecting you know how you work in the game. And uh, how long have you been working on it, and how, when do you plan to get it out? So uh, in spirit, I've been working on it for six years. Uh, it started with like a little board game system that I, I once did, but in reality, Quest Quest itself has been in development for about six months to a year. Um, you know, we got the engine done. We're starting to really roll out content. Um, our hope is to get it out in the next year or so. I say year or so very generously. We know it will be out before Half-Life 3. I can say that definitively. <laughs> um, and yeah, that's, that's, that's what we're looking at for a release window. You brought up the engine. Uh, is it something you guys have coded yourself or do you use an existing engine? So it's kind of a mix. We're using RPG Maker MV, which also runs off of JavaScript. So what that means is that RPG Maker MV can handle all the dialogue so I don't have to deal with spreadsheets. But it also means I can like go into there with a crowbar and start ripping out wires if I want to add a stealth system. Oh, that's cool. So that's a combination of the two. Excellent. Well, thank you. The game looks great. Thank you I so hope much. We'll see you soon.